So I do want to watch this video. This comes to us from The Critical Drinker. And it says, The Boys Season 4, How to Destroy Your Audience. Now, I am up to date with Season 4 of The Boys. And so far, I get it's it's okay. It's not terrible. It's, it's not great. All right. But I do want to see what the drinker has to say. And uh, yeah, let's go and check this baby out. Here we go. One of the questions that comes up pretty regularly on Open Bar these days is, Drinker, you tough-talking, charismatic gunslinger with a dark past, when are you going to review The Boys Season 4? Ah, The Boys. Now that's a name I've not heard in a long time. You know, I used to be a real fan of that show, to the point where I actually gave the first season a Drinker Recommends award. And truly, what higher accolade can one bestow upon a work of art these days? Anyway, at a time when the superhero genre was already becoming kind of stale and played out, the boys yep. came along to completely tear up the rule book. Funny, violent, irreverent, and wickedly subversive, with a complex and well-written cast of heroes. Yeah, the thing is that, um, what's it called? The first two seasons were great. Uh, the, I think season one was probably the best season. And season two was pretty good too. But season, uh, season three sort of got, uh, you know, sort of, it was okay. Uh, I did like Jensen Eccles as um as was a so soldier boy and uh yeah i liked them a lot but that's the reason why i technically watched season four i mean season three and then heard season five they're bringing in um uh sam winchester right the other brother right from uh what's it called again supernatural so i believe he's coming in but the thing is like what we've seen from season three and season four sort of like replayed you sort of know what's coming like you sort of know like that the gags that who's gonna die and like the jokes like what who they're making fun of like we do it sort of gets played out season one and two however are amazing let's continue and villains plus a whole lot of other characters in between and a story that brutally skewered everything from fake corporate activism to our obsession with celebrity culture media manipulation and cultural warfare it was really everything you could look for in a show like this i kind of checked out after season three partly because i was pretty burned out with superhero stories in general even shows that subverted the genre and partly because i could see the way the boys was heading as a creative property the complex new and multifaceted characters were slowly morphing into simplified parodies of themselves. The central storyline was becoming trite and predictable, and the bitingly witty satire was becoming more overt and partisan with every season, parroting the same predictable talking points as every other Hollywood product. Basically, the boys just wasn't cool or interesting anymore. It wasn't fighting the power, it was the power. Yep. It wasn't raging against the machine, it was part of it. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's basically like uh, what's it called again? Uh, yeah, Rage Against the Machine. Now they're raising for the machine, right? Like this is supposed to be a show about the counter superhero stuff, but now of course Eric Kripke, who has extreme mental disabilities uh, such as uh, Trump derangement sy syndrome, basically makes everything about Trump, right? Of course, in the comic books it wasn't like that, and it was uh, and the, the graphic novel, and it was written about like nine, ten years ago, so a long time before Trump even came to office, and he had in an interview recently said that it just so happens. That it just, you know, it's a happy accident. It, it just aligns um, the, what the boys is becoming. It aligns with my political ideology. So what happens is that now Homelander is basically Trump, and uh, everyone that likes Homelander is the MAGA MAGA side, and then everyone that doesn't like him is the you know progressive left leftist Antifa side, right? So it's sort of like yeah, we know that this is a parody, we know this since the beginning, but the thing is that now it's just like they're beating you over the head with it. It's like dude, yes, we get it. You don't like Trump, move the fuck on. But he can't let it go, and he already said if this if this trumpism thing is, is pissing you off don't watch my show watch other shows and that's what a lot of people are going to do right a lot of conservatives republicans or even trump supporters they like they like the show right like homelander is one of the few good things about the show yeah but the thing is that you're trying to you it's like yo homelander does this he doesn't give a shit about anything he that he has he has no consequences it's like yo bro stop s trying to sell me on the character i already like him but the thing is it's like you have a creator who hates half of their fan base. And if you have a creator that hate, ha hates half of their fan base, it's eventually going to get so drawn out where you don't care anymore. But the thing is that Drinker does not live in the United States. And even someone like him, it's, it's just, it's, the thing is that also goes to show is bad writing, 
right? It's, it's just like, oh, yes, I don't care. Yes, I don't care. Show me something different. And we already know that Eric Kripke said that they're going to stray away from the graphic novel's uh, big twist with Black Noir. And I'm not a big fan of that because I like that I like that twist. And the reason why he said that is because you don't want to follow a character for such a long time and find out that, like, this person is not who you thought they were. And it just, it's, it's sort of stupid, but let's continue. What was once rebellious, subversive, and irreverent had become just another mouthpiece for the safe, corporatized, hollow, and performative activism that it once so brutally mocked. So I wasn't exactly brimming with excitement at the prospect of sacrificing another eight hours of my increasingly limited lifespan for the new season. Frankly, I've got better things to do with my time. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, maybe they managed to turn things around. I mean, Stranger could Things be good. was drinking at the Last Chance Saloon for me after a disastrously bad season three, only for the showrunners to listen to fan complaints and come back with an absolute banger of season four. Maybe Ho we'd actually get something simple. Holy shit, man. Yeah, he's 100% right. Season, f season one and season four were the best seasons of Stranger Things. It was so good. It's so, it's, I love Eddie. Eddie was my favorite character. He's it's so good. Season three sucked, all right? And here's the thing. It, it it's probably has to do with stupid writing as well. And they made an annoying black little girl. Granted, she played her part perfectly because if she was annoying, she's supposed to come out annoying and a know-it-all. She did a fantastic job, the person who played her. But the thing is that I hated that. Right. Yes, you get, you got some like the whole like LGBTQ stuff that came out in uh, in season three. But the thing is, season four was just like, damn, this was good. It was really good, man. Holy crap. Yeah. But the thing is that we have a couple more seasons. So I believe where they're they're renewed for season five. So we next season could be a banger. I would love to be proven wrong. Like One Piece live action. I thought that shit was gonna suck dick. That thing was great. Yeah, try watching the whole series again, and season three is hard to get through again. Yeah, it's, it's bad, man. Season three was awful. Similar here. So it was off to Rotten Tomatoes for me to check out the reviews. Not the critic reviews, of course, because nobody in their right mind gives a shit what yeah, those nobody cares about that shows have got man. to say about anything Fuck anymore. That shit. I'm talking about the audience reviews, which is the only semi-reliable barometer for quality these days, and oh. 50 oh. Juan. I mean, the audience scores had been gradually declining from an all-time high of 90% in Season 1 to 75% by Season 3, but that's kind of in line with most shows, to be fair. But there's no denying that Season 4 absolutely fell off a cliff. Good lord, I don't think I've seen a fan base turn so hard on any show since Game of Thrones. Look mm -hmm. through the reviews and you'll see page after page of absolutely brutal write-ups, all saying basically yeah. wait, wait, the wait, same what's thing. Oh, uh, I missed it. Awful seems like the writer's spent these last months just scrolling twitter instead of trying to make a good show because this just seems more like leftist twitter rant rather than an actual an actually entertaining show not to mention how they're be becoming more and more of what they parody rather than what they preach now yeah, exact 100 percent. and episode episode uh what's the kind of four definitely does show uh more right that the part where um I guess this is spoilers for a little bit. Um, uh, Starlight basically beats the shit out of a firecracker because uh, she revealed that she got a an abortion. Right? And the thing is that, yeah. And then it's like, look at the leftist because um, Starlight's supposed to represent the left. Look at your, le your, your slay queen leftist beating up this person it's because you can't handle the truth. Right? Like, the fact that you can't handle the truth, you beat the shit out of her. That's what a lot of Antifa people do. Right, I'm, I, and I'm just pointing out. I'm just pointing it out. All right, I mean, I'm, what I've seen, Antifa, whenever you, you, they can't, they, they basically beat you up if you're not with them, you're against them, all that kind of stuff. Right, same thing with any kind of stigma, dogma that's happening online right now. Whether you are pro pro Palestine or anti, you know, anti Palestine, whether you're pro Ukraine or anti Ukraine, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't you're pro Trump or anti Trump? A lot of the people who, especially, we see a lot on the left side, the more progressive leaning side, if they if you sort of shut them down with facts they get pissed off and destroy your building they burn your building down 
general consensus is that the show seems to have sacrificed writing quality and smart characterization in favor of simplistic shock value and cheap political point scoring. Yep, in exactly. short, the writers have become more interested in getting their own personal ideology across and owning the chuds rather than actually telling a good story. And well, that sort of strategy never really pays off. Naturally, I was curious to get the other side of the story, so I took a look at a recent interview with showrunner Eric Kripke, oh, the Hollywood go. Reporter, we and go. he had this to say about accusations that the show had become too partisan. I clearly have a perspective, and I'm not shy about putting that perspective in the show. Anyone who wants to call the show woke or whatever, that's okay. Go watch something else. But I'm certainly not going to pull any punches or apologize for what we're doing. Some people who watch it think Homelander is the hero. What do you say to that? The show's many things, subtle isn't one of them. So if that's the message you're getting from it, I just throw up my hands. Now, now, now here's the thing. Um, when you tell people go watch something else and then your show tanks in ratings and viewership, do not blame the fans. Blame yourself. Right? Elizabeth Banks did the same thing. Uh, a lot of people says don't like it, don't watch it. Frost did the same thing. Completely killed G4. And the thing is that I, like, like you said, I was on, I was on film thread earlier. I know Chris on a, like, I know him personally. Like I met him. I hung out with him. I had, I broke bread with him. I had dinner with him. I, I bought dinner for him before. It's like, I know, he, imagine a guy from G4 saying that G4 is dead is because of Frost without saying it. It's just sad, right? And that's the reason why. A lot of these people who said, don't watch our show, right? Elizabeth Banks blamed the fans, right? Disney, oh, this isn't made for you anymore, right? Uh, a Wrinkle in Time, this, is, this isn't made for 40-year-old white dudes, right? Like, what happened? Wrinkle in Time sucks, right? A, a lot of these shows, like, you know, the w w Wish sucks. A lot of these movies that people say, it's not made for you anymore. They all sucked and made no money. It's because they alienated half their fan base. Why don't you just make something good? Shut your goddamn mouth. Make something good. Who cares if you go by she, they, they, them, or whatever pronouns you, you have, right? For instance, um, I don't care about pronouns at all, okay? Uh, when people ask me what are my pronouns, I say go fuck yourself most of the time, unless they're my friends. Uh, but I, I don't really care. I don't really care about that shit. But the thing is, uh, we have the person, Rhaenyra, the, act, the actress is playing Rhaenyra, the adult one, on House of the Dragon. She identifies as they, them, I believe. She has, she has pronouns. She's, she identifies as non-binary. Um, does not put any identity politics or any of her own beliefs into the show. Right? Granted, she's an actor. She's not a writer or a director. But the thing is that a lot of the actors do come out and say otherwise right like if you have like you know rachel zegler or uh you know a lot of these woke people right you know down yada yada down down with the patriarchy like all that kind of bullshit she the thing is that house of the dragon it's so good still it's still so damn good and we're only in episode two right she doesn't let any of her identity politics or what she believes in seep into the show unlike everything else we're seeing in the western the western uh hollywood um you know entertainment sphere they have to let people know my my pro hey i'm so and so and here are my pronouns who cares nobody cares about your pronouns right and the only time that people use pronouns is when you are not there or we're talking to you in a third person right it's like oh she's not here he's not here they are not here right who cares about your fucking pronouns man it's so stupid and that's the reason why when you have all these things like dude I, I was really, really enjoying a show, and all of a sudden, boom, snap back to reality, open my dicks, go up for gravity, right? And then you have, like, I just in, instantly get reminded that, oh, this, this, you know, my escapism is gone, right? Watching the acolyte, oh, is it he or they? Dude, dude, shut the fuck up. No one fucking cares. It's a fucking goblin. It's a fucking, like, golfer or whatever looking shit, man. Who cares? Why do, why do we have to care about their pronouns? Just make a good show. Jesus. How is it so simple and yet so difficult? 
You know, why do I feel like this is rapidly becoming a tale as old as time? A show gets popular and goes mainstream, the writers get a little too overconfident and think they can use it as a platform for their own personal hang-ups, the fans start to push back against them, and instead of taking that criticism on board and responding in a constructive manner, they just say, fuck it, go watch something else, you dicks. Yep. Kinda reminds me of this idiot who did her level best to tank the American comic book industry and then had the balls to berate her own customers for not loving what she was doing. And if you don't like my politics, don't buy my book. I wonder what happened. Do girls enjoy yourself? It's the entertainment I wonder what happened to our book. asshole kid who takes his ball and flounces off home because everyone else won't play the game the way he wants them to. It's this weird narcissistic sense of entitlement amongst creatives these days that everyone should just unconditionally support and agree with you because you're such a paragon of wisdom that there's no possibility you could ever be wrong about anything. The problem, Eric, is that other people don't always think exactly the same way we do. They yep. don't always share our beliefs, parrot our opinions, mirror are our viewpoints on every topic, and that's okay because people are allowed to have different points of view. A smart, humble, and creative writer finds ways to bridge the gap between all these different groups through the unifying concept of good storytelling. <laughs> A bad writer, on the other hand, tries to hammer home his opinions on his audience with sheer brute force and then gets angry and resentful when they push back against it. Yep. I'll let you decide which one you used to be and which one you are now. Also, it's interesting watching the discourse around the boys on social media, which I can best summarise as, the boys used to be smart and fun, now it's all about pushing politics and nothing else. <laughs> Cry <laughs> harder, chuds. Don't you know this show was always making fun of people like you? It was fucking hubris. <sighs> it was subtle, okay, and it was, we already know. With. We already yes, know. It, was, it wasn't with a surprise. brain cells knew exactly what this show was and where its political sympathies lay. Nobody in their right mind looked at Homelander as a misunderstood hero that represented the voice of the masses. Nobody looked at Stormfront and thought, you know what, she's got a point there. Nobody clapped and cheered when the Deep forced himself on Starlight, and it's complete gaslighting to suggest otherwise. The show was never particularly subtle about its politics or what it expected its audience to take from it. The difference though is that for the first couple of seasons at least, it was actually fun and entertaining yep. because the creative focus was still on the story and characters. And believe it or not, people can be surprisingly receptive to your political ideas when they're smartly presented and wrapped up inside an entertaining product. People can empathise with characters that embody ideas they don't normally support as long as those characters are well written and likeable. People are even capable of laughing at themselves when you point out the more absurd or extreme elements of their worldview, provided you do it in a way that's actually funny and insightful. In each of these cases though, the primary focus should always be on entertaining your audience instead of lecturing or pandering to them, and I think this is where the boys has finally come unstuck. The more strident and blatant your messaging becomes, the less entertained people are going to be and the more of your audience you end up pushing away. Instead of uniting them with entertainment, you end up dividing and alienating them with politics. And well, I hope it was all worth it, Eric. I hope yep. it was worth tanking your franchise, tarnishing your legacy, and turning your own customers against you, all for the sake of some cheap political theatre that's going to be forgotten as soon as your show's over. I hope all those pats on the back that you and your fellow writers have given yourselves make you feel better when the show inevitably gets cancelled. And no, I don't think I will be watching season 4 of The Boys after all. Quite frankly, I've got better things to do, and I suspect you do as well. Anyway... <sighs> That's all I've got for today. Go away now. Man. Yep. 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 That was good, man. That's that 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 that's some good stuff, man. Right, I'm gonna share his video. Yeah, I, oh oh. A drinker usually comes out with a lot of good stuff. A lot, lot, lot of good stuff, so I'm gonna share it with you guys. Go ahead and go ahead and uh give it a like and share and subscribe and all, all that kind of stuff. But yeah. Uh Necess uh the thing is that I will be continuing watching the show is because I wanna see if it actually gets better. Right? I want to put my my money where my mouth is, right? I want I want to see it get better. The thing is that like I really liked uh, season one and season two of it, and season three was okay. You know, I thought uh, Hero Gasm was probably my favorite episode because uh, we saw a lot of tits. Unfortunately, we saw a lot of dicks too, a lot of a lot of long dicks. But um, but yeah, I I will, I will want to see it get better. It's because I would like to be proven wrong that the show actually is is, is just you know we're only halfway into the show uh, of of uh, season four. Hopefully it gets better, 
And if it does, that's great. But if it doesn't, then we all know why why it sucks. Is because um, he let identity politics uh, get into it, and he said he doesn't care. So if it sucks, and it sucks, and uh, as of right now, you have currently alienated half of your audience and people that watch your stuff. And the thing is that we want stuff that that's evergreen. We want stuff that's timeless, all right? Make something that's timeless when you watch 20, 30 years from now, it will still make sense and it'll still be good, right? As of right now, the boys sort of make sense and it's, it, but if it's gonna continue going down the same route as it is, it's gonna, gonna get bad, right? Like if you watch She-Hulk, if you watch the Marvels, uh, Captain Marvel, or some of these like terrible movies like uh, and TV shows like The Acolyte, it won't make sense 30 years from now. Like if you watch Doctor Who, the most recent uh, the most recent season, or even the most recent holiday special, it won't make sense. Is because fifty years, hundred years from now, people are people are going to be like, what, what, what's pronouns? What's they, them? No one uses this shit anymore because it's a phase and it's eventually gonna phase out, right? Versus something like game, uh, what's it called? Earlier Game of Thrones, of course, not the most recent ones. Uh, current House, uh, currently House of the Dragon, and the ultimate timeless trilogy of all lord of the rings you can watch lord of the rings right now it'll still make sense you watch it 30 years 50 years from now it'll still make sense you have a fucking giga chad lead a hero to aspire to such as aragorn the most giga chad probably the best well-written character in the entire movie franchise his character will oh it will resonate throughout time it is timeless Versus stuff like pronouns, activism, garbage, terrible shit that has nothing to do with just a story. It's no one's going to care about it. And people are just going to be, oh, this is just some woke bullshit of its time. No one's going to care anymore. But yeah, uh, th th this is a good, this is a good one though. This is a good one. I am going to continue watching. Hopefully I see more tits. As of right now, I have not seen any tits in the show yet. 